Welcome to One Brooklyn, presented by Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. On this edition of One Brooklyn, Brooklyn Borough President Adams joins with DPH Property Maintenance Service, a Brooklyn-based residential and commercial maintenance company, to remove graffiti from the exterior of A1 Auto Repair Service, a black-owned business on Atlantic Avenue. In recent months, parts of Atlantic Avenue and other areas of the city have experienced a major uptick in graffiti, which has heightened the quality of life concerns for residents and merchants already suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier this year, the city suspended its popular $3 million graffiti-free New York City program indefinitely, and 311 stopped accepting graffiti complaints due to significant budgetary shortfalls. Borough President Adams helped power wash the facade of A1 Auto Repair Service and announced a grant to Flatbush Development Corporation to further promote cleanup efforts around the borough. Thank you, thank you very much. And I really want to thank um, Councilman Carnegie. This is his uh, councilmatic district and the importance of this important initiative that we're out here. You don't have to travel far on Atlantic Avenue, up and down corridors throughout the entire city. And it is not your imagination Graffiti is back, and it's back even worse than it was during the 70s when tags were placed on buildings and walls. Now you are seeing tags placed on homes, private properties, churches, schools. Nothing is free from this graffiti assault on our city. And so we're standing here today in front of uh, one of the businesses. If you look at the wall here, uh, it is impacting. I want to thank uh, the owner of this business that's here, A1 Auto Repair Services. I want to thank him today uh, for allowing us to come here and hold this important. Even this truck here, right on the side of this truck, you see graffiti. You know, it's nothing is escaping. We also want to thank Anthony uh, Fickle from DPH Maintenance Services. We want to uh, thank uh, our businesses who are really helping us address this important issue. And uh, Kayvon, uh, who owns this shop here, we want to thank you for just allowing us to highlight this issue. Uh, there's a noticeable uptick in graffiti issues along Atlantic Avenue and throughout our city. Earlier this year, the city suspended the popular $3 million graffiti-free New York City program due to budgetary uh, restraints and budgetary issues. Uh, 311 also has stopped accepting graffiti complaints so they can force focus on core issues. We're saying this should be a core issue because it sends the wrong message that our city is out of control and it leads to a sense of quality of life concerns. Uh, the Department of Sanitation, graffiti tracking, which provides real-time updates about the location and resolution of reporting incidents of gra graffiti within New York City has not been updated since January 2020. We are 11 months into the year and we have yet to update how we are resolving these important issues. We're hearing from residents, business leaders, everyday New Yorkers who are walking the street, they're asking, why aren't we addressing this real quality of life issue? And it's more than just an eyesore. It causes a real quality of life problem for residents and it leads to less foot traffic and commercial corridors because people are concerned about the look and the image of the city. Basic entities like this, even during COVID-19 and economic and budgetary issues should not impact the quality of life of our city. For, for many, far too many, it brings back the bad old days of the 70s where we saw tags all over the city and it really gave the feeling that our city again was not in control. Our small businesses are already suffering. 
It is projected by the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, a third of all small businesses could close permanently. And that is alarming. The outside of the catchment area of business improvement districts and other civic groups often have to go into their own pockets to clean graffiti and to fix the writing and the damage to their property. That's why today we're calling on three things. One, we are asking for the city to restore the funding for graffiti-free New York City program during the budget modification season. Second, we want to increase support for groups like Groundswell to create community reflective murals. Let a, let's the, allow the creativity of the city, but let's do it in the right way. Have walls where business owners agree and you can use it to do murals like we did down the block where we had a mural that really talked about the issue of prison reform. It was done smartly and within coordination with the business owner. Three, increase coordination between business and local precincts to increase preventive measures. And let's send a loud message to those who deface our property that is not acceptable and won't be tolerated. We are also announcing today a new discretionary grant of $5,000 from our office to Flappers Development Corporation to help fund cleanup efforts in the catchment area. Allowing graffiti to fester anywhere in our city will only deepen the quality of life issues we face and we can't afford that right now. It is only going to hurt the current conditions we are living in. Our city must use every tool available to ensure our business corridors and residential areas remain are vibrant. We also need partnerships with local businesses to step up. We want to thank DPH Maintenance for their gracious in-kind contribution to A1 Auto Repair Services today. Uh, this is the type of cooperation we're going to need as we deal with this very real issue and as we deal with the financial crises that our city is facing. So again, it's time to address a real quality of life issue. The writing on the walls, the painting, is all having a negative impact on our city and every New Yorker can play its role by using these simple tools. If you see graffiti on your house, if you see it on a pole or on the wall next to your house, we're asking you to use simple things like graffiti, Vandal X, so you can remove the graffiti. If we do our part, the city could do its part and we can make our city a graffiti-free city. And so I want to thank uh, a partner in this initiative. <laughs> Councilman Robbie Carnegie. Thank you, Bar President. Good morning. Keeping our community safe and allowing all our family, friends, and neighbors to thrive means working to overcome the range of challenges that we face. From COVID-19 and the economic challenges to daily quality of life challenges that impact our neighborhoods and our small businesses. Graffiti is one of those problems that can add up to thousands of dollars of costs to already cash-strapped small businesses. Imagine thousands of dollars of extra costs when you're already trying to make payroll, trying to cope with the cost of COVID, and trying to succeed as a small business. That's why I'm proud to welcome the grant Borough President Adams announces today to help Flatbush Development Corporation with cleanup efforts across Brooklyn. Overcoming any other problems facing our communities will take our working together. And I know we can tackle quality of life issues like graffiti when we work together. And while the city has really taken and had an appetite for having graffiti as an art form, when it's on property that's private or businesses, that's defacing property. So while we respect graffiti as an art form, we do not respect its use against the owner's will. There are places in the city that have come forward to allow graffiti as an art form to be displayed on someone's business or someone's home is not that. 
For those of us who weathered the storm of the 70s and the 80s, we realize that not only is this graffiti, but it's a language spoken in communities. And sometimes it conveys a message of unsafety, of gang conversations, all kind of things happen in the context of graffiti. So while in its context, it can be beautiful and, and appreciated in this, con uh, in this context, not so much. So I wanna thank the local business owner for coming forward and allowing the borough president and myself and our partners to make his place back beautiful like it once was. This corner is a commercial thoroughfare and it's the gateway to Bedford Stuyvesant. We need that to remain welcoming by having his business displayed and his work displayed, not graffiti. Thank you, Borough President Adams. Thank you, thank you so much. And we want to bring on Anthony from DPH Maintenance Services. Anthony. Hello everyone, thank you for being here today. Uh, I am Anthony J. Finkel, and I am the owner and CEO of DPH Property Maintenance Service. I'm honored to be here today and to work with Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams and Council Member Robert Cornegy, as well as Kivan and his business and their wonderful teams on this graffiti removal initiative. As a small business owner, I understand the unique challenges that business owners face. Imagine being a business owner and having a brick and mortar location and you wake up one day to see that the business that you worked so hard to build has been defaced. How would that make you feel? Graffiti is an eyesore and does nothing positive for the community. In fact, it negatively affects community spirit and property value. It has a negative social and economic impact on the community. Graffiti is also an act of vandalism. Removing graffiti is a time-consuming and costly process. Through initiatives like this one, it is my hope that we can continue to remove graffiti and improve the quality of our borough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Caleb, I'm the owner of A1 Auto Repair. I've been there 11 years. Uh, this is a very important corner. I just want to thank the borough president for this initiative. Uh, graffiti does take away from my business. Um, uh, with this wall being presented in a good way, I get more customers. Um, I just want to thank you guys and um, just keep, it, keep New York City clean. I love it. All right. <laughs>